Hey, Math 20-2. Today we're going to look at some reasoning with congruent triangles. So, introduction to congruent triangles. Each of these five triangles are positioned differently, but they all have the same size and shape, and we call these congruent triangles. Same size, same shape. The diagrams below show the flags of some countries in the world and of some Canadian provinces. All the flags shown have some features in common. Each flag contains triangles which are the same shape and size, meaning congruent triangles. Two triangles which have the same shape and same size are said to be congruent. The flags of American Samoa and Namibia each contain one pair of congruent triangles. So let's look at American Samoa and Namibia. So it looks like this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here. Over here in Namibia, looks like this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here. So those are two sets of congruent triangles. The flags of Scotland, Jamaica, and Nova Scotia all have two pairs of congruent triangles. Scotland, Jamaica, and Nova Scotia, two pairs. Nova Scotia has two pairs, so let's say these two are congruent and these two are congruent. Scotland and Jamaica, same situation. Again, these two are congruent triangles, these two are congruent triangles. Same thing with Jamaican flag. These two triangles are congruent, and these two are congruent. And it tells us that Newfoundland has a set of four and one set of two congruent triangles. So the Newfoundland flag looks like these four are all congruent triangles, and these two are congruent. All right. Congruent triangles. A triangle has three sides and three angles. Two triangles are congruent if all pairs of corresponding sides and all pairs of corresponding angles are equal. So in the diagram, triangle PQR is congruent to triangle LMN. That's written as such, triangle PQR. This symbol means congruent to triangle LMN. Note that to describe congruent triangles, we write the corresponding angles in the same order. So angle P would equal angle L. Angle Q would equal angle M. Angle R would equal angle N. If we're looking at the sides, side PQ is the same length as side LM. Side QR would be the same length as MN. And side PR would be the same length as LN. All right. If that's true, they are congruent triangles. However, we do not need all six measurements in a triangle to prove that the triangles are congruent. In the work below, we can show that in certain circumstances, only three measurements are required to prove that triangles are congruent. So there are several possible groupings of three measurements from a triangle. You could have all three angles, AAA. You could have side, 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 where you've got all three sides. You could have side, side, angle, where two sides and an angle are not contained. By the two sides, you could have angle, side, angle, where two angles and the side contained by two angles are given. Or you could have side angle side, where in this case you've got two sides and the contained angle. That's different than side side angle, where you've got two sides and the non contained, sorry, yeah, two sides and a non contained angle. So if we look through these, we notice that in the situations in the column on the left here, different triangles can be drawn, they don't have the same shape and size. So if you're given three angles, you can have two triangles that are drawn with the same angles. They both have 90 degrees. These would both be 30, and these would both be 60. But they're definitely not congruent triangles. They're the same shape, but they're definitely different sizes. If you look at side-side angle, we're given two sides of 1 centimeter, two sides of 2.5 centimeters, and an angle that's equal. But those are definitely not congruent triangles, even though those three measurements are the same. So just because we're given three measurements that are the same in two triangles doesn't mean they're congruent. So if you're given angle, 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 or a side, side, angle, you can't prove triangle congruency. However, if you're given all three sides, side, 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 or if you're given angle, side, angle, two angles in the, con or, yeah, two angles in the contained side, or if you're given two sides in the contained angle, that will prove triangle congruency. So in each of these situations, if you're given any of those three measurements in two triangles, then the triangles are congruent. All right. Final note. 
Angle, angle, side. In this situation, where we're given two angles and a side not contained by the two angles, we could calculate the measure of the third angle, because we know the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if I know two angles, I could find the third angle. Once you know the third angle, then you're really in an angle, side, angle situation. All right? Which would prove triangle congruency. Great. Let's do example two here in each case. Use the given information to determine if the triangles are congruent. And if they are congruent, state the congruence condition. All right, so that's what we looked at the last page. So what I notice is we've got angles measured X. I've got angles measured O. So those are sets of equals angles. And this side is the same length as that side. So you've got angle, side, angle with this triangle. Angle, side, angle with this triangle. If that's the case, we would call these congruent triangles because of the, because of the congruency condition angle, side, angle. We'll look over in B, the X's are equal, the O's are equal, the Y's are equal. This is called angle, angle, angle. If you've got three equal angles, you've got a, a triangle that's the same shape, but it could be different sizes. So these are not congruent. If you look at part C, we're given three sides in one triangle equaling three sides in the other triangle. So if you're given three sides that are equal, we're saying these are congruent based on side, side, side. All right. And in set D, two angles that are 90 degrees, we've got two sides that are equal. And this side is equal to both triangles. So it's got to be the same side. So again, these are going to be congruent triangles based on side, angle, side. So you've got two sides of the contained angle equal, they must be congruent triangles. Example three, in parallelogram ABCD, prove that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD or CDB. All right, so let's prove this. Well, what things do we know for sure? Right now, if it's a parallelogram, we know that these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. So if we know those two things, let's use our parallel line theorem, things with uh, certain angles with patterns. And I can see right away a Z pattern right here. So I know that these two angles must be equal. So naming those two angles, let's say that angle ABD that's that top one. Angle ABD is equal to angle CDB. So here's angle ADB. Here's CDB. They're equal. I have to give a reason why they're equal. Well, these are called alternate angles. We know that. All right, so these are alternate angles. And if you want to put the Z pattern down. That's, a, that's why they're alternate angles. That's why they work alternate interior angles. We could also look right here. Here's another Z pattern. So these two angles must be equal. All right, so how do I name those? Well, angle ADB is equal to angle CBD. And again, these are alternate angles. And that's part of the, because of the Z pattern, right? They form a Z. What else do we know? Well, we also know that in these two triangles, ABD and, and CDB, side DB is common, all right? So we know that side DB equals side DB, right? So how do I write that? You can just say uh, DB equals BD if you want. And that's a common side in both triangles. So it must be equal. It must be the same thing. So what I now have is angle, side, angle. So I could say that triangle ABD is congruent 
to triangle CDB, just like they ask us to prove. Right? They want us to prove that congruency. And the reason it's congruent is because I've got angle side angle congruency. We just proved that up above. All right. Finally, example four. The illustration shown represents a symbol for a communicator in a new TV space series. Use the information in the diagram to prove that AD equals BC. So you want to prove that line AD equals line BC. What I'm going to suggest we do is draw two separate triangles. I want to draw this triangle here, A to D to F. So let's draw a triangle ADF and measure the length of the sides. So I know that DF is 4 centimeters. I know that AF, if I add that, 3 plus 4, that's 7 centimeters. All right. And let's also draw triangle BCF. So let's draw triangle BCF. So here's B, there's C, and here's F. So if I label what I know in triangle BCF, from C to F, well, that's 4 centimeters. From B to F, well, that's 3 plus 4, or 7 centimeters. What they want us to do now is prove that AD equals BC. So I've got two separate triangles there. I would suggest the first thing I want to do then, if I want to prove those sides are the same, what I want to do is prove that triangle ADF is congruent to triangle BCF. So if I can prove that the blue triangle below is congruent to the green triangle below, then the corresponding sides BD, sorry, AD and BC must be equal. All right? So let's prove this triangle is congruent. So write down the things we know for sure right now. Right now, I know that side AF in the blue triangle is equal to side BF in the green triangle. They're both 7 centimeters. Right? That's a given measure. We were given that in the diagram. I know that side DF in the blue triangle is the same as side CF in the green triangle. They're both 4 centimeters. So right now I have two sides that are the same. I need three measurements, usually, to prove triangle congruency. So I need to figure out one other thing that's the same. Well, if I look at this, angle F in this triangle is the exact same angle F in that triangle. So if I label it angle AFD in the blue triangle is the exact same measure as angle BFC in the green triangle. If we look up above, this angle is the same. So I redrew it in the two triangles. That's the same measure. That angle hasn't changed. So that's a common angle. All right. So that's common. So it's got to be equal. So what I now have is side angle side, side angle side in both triangles. So I can say that triangle ADF must be congruent to triangle BCF based on side angle side. I know two sides of the contained angle. That proves triangle congru congruency. And once I know the triangles are congruent, then every other corresponding angle and corresponding side must be equal. So I can now say AD should equal BC. That's what we were asked to prove. Does AD equal BC? We just proved it. How can I prove it? Because I've proven congruent triangles. So those sides are the same based on congruent triangles. Excellent. So you got your assignment. Where you go.